Just after 2 o'clock, welcome back to Central Valley Talk. We're live right now on YouTube TV, Facebook, Instagram, and, of course, our home, centralvalleytalk.com. Austin Reed with you on this Wednesday. It is the 21st of April. It's a hot one here in Fresno. Get ready because we are going to see some rain in the next few days, which will be nice and cool things down. Now, our next guest is Frank Morganti III, joining us live via Zoom. Frank is in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Frank, can you hear me? Yes, I can. And, uh, you know, it may be hot out there, but here in Minnesota, it's at about well, 46 degrees. So we're I having had, a small cold front. I had a <laughs> feeling because, you know, yesterday, of course, I was watching the news coverage of the, the Derek Chauvin case and mm -hmm. everybody outside dressed very, very warm. But you're looking nice. I like your Thank you. American uh, American pin, American flag pin. Yeah. How you been? <laughs> I'm sorry. How have you been? You know, I've been doing really well. And, you know, the overall mood here in the Twin Cities, for the most part, has been really good. I've been keeping track of it on the news. I happened to see the verdict uh, on the news on my phone yesterday. And I think it was a verdict that a lot of people were expecting. And some probably, I don't want to say were not expecting, but were probably upset because they may have conservative views on law enforcement. And I think what the public kind of needs to understand is, yes, there needs to be reform within the police department, but we can't do away without it. It is something that is in a sense so, and there's a lot of good officers out there. You know, uh, it's unfortunate that, as the old saying goes, one ruins the whole batch. Right, right. And that's, yeah. what, that's why I invited Frank on today to kind of talk about what the mood is in Minneapolis. I mean, we also have the situation maybe a week, week and a half ago in Brooklyn Center, which is in a suburb. Correct. That's a yes. suburb of, of the Twin Cities, right? It is. Conservatively speaking, um, you know, without getting too technical, Brooklyn Center from downtown Minneapolis, we'll say. Brooklyn Center is about 10 to 15 miles northwest of downtown Minneapolis. So it's in the immediate Twin Cities metro area, and they are their own city. So they have their own city hall, their own police force, et cetera. Is it, is it large or? You know, offhand, I don't have the numbers. Um, the whole Twin Cities metro area is, last time I checked on uh, the census stuff, was around a little over 3 million people as a whole. What you have to remember about the Twin Cities metro area, we're kind of like Dallas, Fort Worth, right. or Tampa, St. Petersburg. So we have a lot of individually small cities, which adds up to a great big population. Um, last time I checked, Minneapolis itself, last time I checked, wasn't even 500,000. It was like 400 and some odd thousand. That was oh, a couple of years ago. So if you were to pick up Minneapolis alone and pick it up and put it in the middle of nowhere, we're actually a as a city, quite small population and geographically. But when, you know, you have Minneapolis, St. Paul, Brooklyn Center, <clears throat> like I said, we're close to around the three million mark. Yeah. Well, take. So, yeah, the city of Fresno is larger than Minneapolis. We're at about 550. Yeah. And oftentimes 000. it gets confused. Next to Brooklyn Center is Brooklyn Park. So people sometimes get oh. those two cities confused. <laughs> but they're that, neighbors. That would make sense. So, yeah. Eric Chauvin, you know, here at Central Valley Talk, we were watching as the verdict was being read by the judge. You know, late in the afternoon yesterday, you know, Derek Chauvin uh, guilty on all three charges. Yeah. And I think a lot of people across the country and even world were prepping for riots. If for the worst. Yeah, I want to say what I've kind of been hearing, like on the news and just from people in general, they were prepping for either way, even if he was found guilty on all three counts, which he happened to be, they were prepping for the worst because there's always people out there looking for an opportunity. Um, there's people out there who want to peacefully protest. And it was unfortunate that last summer uh, that those people who found their way into those peaceful protests showed their true colors uh, with the riots as a result of the death of George Floyd. And um, fortunately, in my immediate neighborhood, there wasn't any uh, issues. I, I live about four and a half miles southwest of downtown Minneapolis. 
and I'm on the seventh floor of an apartment building. So I did see the smoke and the fire from the riots about four and a half miles east of me. And it was a sad scene because that was something up until, you know, last year that I've only read about or really saw on TV. In my lifetime, it would have been the riots of 92, the Rodney King riots in 92 mm-hmm. in Los Angeles, talking to my uncle who lives in Santa Monica. And he saw, he remembers talking about seeing the smoke over the mountain. And so it was kind of a surreal feeling. But on the same token, it's unfortunate that it takes tragedy to bring the good out. And hopefully with this trial, it seems like they were trying to make an example out of him. Uh, But the facts also state, you know, we've all seen the video. If you haven't, you know, you've been isolated. But the facts remain that there does need to be change within the police department as far as um, training, even with the unexpected. And that's always easier said than done in a way. Yeah, we we're going to look at video of uh, Chauvin listening to, you know, the charges. Here it is right now on Central Valley Talk. And this is when the the judge was reading, you know, guilty one, guilty two, guilty (laughs) three. Now, my surprise, I I was a little surprised that uh, every single juror voted the same way. That's just my opinion. What about uh-huh. you? I expected it to be perfectly honest with you. I'm just okay. being candid about this. Sure. I've never met any of the jurors. I don't know who they are. Um, I think, I think they, I don't want to say, I don't want to say they were afraid, mm-hmm. but they knew what was waiting for them on the outside. Right. And some people I've overheard have said, you know, I think he's going to be convicted on all counts just based on fear. And maybe there was a side of that because in today's internet world, in today's fast world, uh, you know, people can find out, even if you have an unlisted phone number, they can find out where you live. They can find out where you are. Uh, In the case of um, uh, the Brooklyn Center issue, they have found out where that officer, that female officer lived in a neighboring community and already had that area fenced off. And, but on the other token, I think the jury also wanted to send a message. Um, they, I, I believe that all of them listened to both sides, um, you know, the defense and the prosecution. Uh, both attorneys, you know, on both sides, they did a good job, in my opinion. I, I have studied the law. When I was in high school, for a while, I thought about being an attorney. Mm. Both sides did present well. It was factorial. Uh, It was well thought out. But in the same token, there's that video evidence. And when you have that visual evidence, that visual element, if you will, uh, that's been seen around the world, that's basically your judge, jury, and executioner right there. Now, were you surprised that Chauvin did not take the stand? That did not surprise me at all. Okay. No, uh, last week, I, I happened to be home that day, and um, you know, I wasn't glued to the trial. Most of the time, I uh, <clears throat> watched it in the evening news, the updates. And, you know, but if I was home, I had it on kind of you know, background, noise, background noise and just kind of you know, seeing what was going on. When I heard he was not taking the fifth, that didn't surprise me. Hmm. And... Probably in his mind of mind, in his heart of heart, he probably felt it wouldn't have made a difference if he took it or not. That's just my own personal opinion. Yeah, I mean, I and I, I've I've heard that side of the story. I guess my thought was, what did he have to lose? I mean, couldn't he have humanized things? You know, maybe showed some kind of remorse. But I guess yeah, that, that would have that would have. What a lot him. of people were wondering about. Um, it could have, it could have gone either way. It could yeah. have made him look more human, or it could have made him look more like a demon. Right. And maybe he thought, after consulting with his attorney in private, uh, he probably thought, just take the fifth and set it out and see what happens. I mean, he literally took a gamble either way. So at this and, 
you know, it's, it's, it's hard to explain because I've never been in that type of a situation. Sure. But on the same token, if he had nothing to hide, why didn't he take the stand? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so the mood, though, is definitely, I, I would say, in, in, in Minneapolis um, and the Twin Cities area, it's, it's a little bit calmer now. It's yeah, and you know it's it's been calm for the okay. most part. It really has been. Um, Brooklyn Center has seen for the last week and a half um, rallies, if you will, in front of their police station. Um, <clears throat> we, I think, it's a lot calmer now. Now that this particular big trial is over, mm-hmm. we do have three more trials of the three other officers coming up uh, in the summer. I right. believe that's going to be in July and August. And the Minnesota National Guard, uh, along with the governor of the uh, state of Minnesota, they, you know, they prepared for this. Now, they, they did not prepare for what was going to happen in Brooklyn Center, but off on hand, uh, off, uh, you know, trying to find the right words here, despite what happened, the tragic situation, I think they did as good a job as they could have, because that's a sad of more fuel to the already sad fire. And it's one of those situations Even when all this stuff is over, uh, Dante Wright, George Floyd, uh, the situation in Chicago now, um, even when all this stuff is over, it won't take long for another spark to ignite a forest fire. And a lot of that has to do with the phones. I mean, granted, I'm using one right now to communicate with you, but we live in a society where we've always been quick to judge. But now with the phones, it's made it even faster. And I think we as a society need to slow down, remember what the facts are, remember that not everyone is perfect. And to quote Nick Carraway from The Great Gatsby, before you criticize anyone, always remember that they didn't have the same opportunities that you had. Very well said. Very well said. By the way, uh, just to let our audience know, uh, Frank and I actually worked together at NBC News in Albuquerque, New Mexico, gosh, 11 years ago. And, uh, and you know, uh, Frank today uh, does many things, but, you know, one of one of the things he does, he's a you know broadcast uh, consultant. And uh, it, it, your insight was great today. And, and especially being in Minneapolis, you know, I had reached out to you last night. I said, uh, uh, Frank, come on, come on my show. And and let's talk about this because this is it's to be here. Yeah, yeah. And I and I feel like this this case was bigger than Rodney King. What do you think? I'm, or I'm I'm kind of battling that one. You know, yeah, and, and I'm also comparing it to the OJ Simpson trial right? too. You know? Yeah. Because now that was a murder trial. Uh, Not by way of police officer, Mm -hmm. but by way of civilian. Sure. And that got so much attention. Uh, God, it's funny. I remember both of those trials like it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. And and, and they're close to 30 years ago now, especially Rodney King, 28 years ago. Right. Um, But, you know, obviously with OJ, it was because it was of a celebrity status. And I still remember it was called the trial of the century. This trial, they just simply called it the trial of Derek Chauvin. I believe... But this is a platform for civil rights. Mm -hmm. And in civil rights for everyone, where I'm going with this is, yes, I, you know, I'm going to use myself personally here. I learned about civil rights growing up in history class in grade school, junior high school, uh, high school and college, you know, different aspects of it. But, you know, I was very fortunate to live in a, sheltered, quiet, suburban lifestyle. And did I feel that civil rights were going to affect me? No, because, you know, let's just face it, I'm I'm a middle-aged white guy or I was a teenage white guy. Mm -hmm. People weren't gunning for me. But nowadays, with what happened with George Floyd, they want to bring everybody, uh, especially this past year now, too, with the COVID-19 issues, um, Asians 
have uh, have more backlash than they'd seen before, and it yep. used to be it had been since World War II that they experienced that type of right, prejudice. right, right. Especially yeah, Vietnamese. And sometimes I think the only way we're all going to get along together is if we see a big silver disc in the sky and the little gray guys come out. That's the only way we're all going to get along. <laughs> I, that's funny. that's when we're all gonna it. like each other yeah right, right? <laughs> exactly exactly but well comparing this trial to oj's and the rodney king uh verdict um obviously when the officers were found not guilty with the rodney king we all know what happened uh yeah. south central mm-hmm. la um you know right. turned into a war zone right right and the other thing too is back then yes it was on national television But we don't have the internet like we do today. So, like I said, things are a lot, you know, things get to people a lot faster. And going back to what I said earlier, sometimes I think we as human beings need to remember, wait, we need to listen to both sides of the story. We need to calm down and get the right facts. Exactly, exactly. Well, uh, Frank, thank you for joining us today. I uh, really appreciate it. Great to see you 11 years later. <laughs> you too. And hope we can catch up again sometime. But yeah, no, if, uh, the Twin Cities is a great place. I've always told people we're not New York or Chicago, but we hold our own. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, hopefully uh, after this now, there will be uh, continued peace. So Exactly. All right. Uh, Frank, thanks again. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. You're watching Central Valley Talk. I'm Austin Reed. We're back with another live local guest in studio in just a couple of minutes. Hang tight.